Hello GeoData people. We're going to move on today to lesson two in unit five. In the last lesson we started looking at circles that we graphed on the xy coordinate graph and today we're going to continue looking at circles. So we're starting on page 15 in the new workbook. All right so at the top of page 15 we have a circle drawn here on an XY coordinate graph and we're going to look at some of the points along the edges of the circle. So here's a table with a lot of different points that are located around the circle. Okay, We're not going to look at all of them. So the first question that they ask us is what is the center of the circle? Now remember in the lesson we had last time the center was at the origin. You can see that the center is not here. The center is over here at point C. And that point is the point 2 comma 0. So the center, the whole circle, has shifted over. It has shifted over two spaces to the right. So the center and the circle are shifted two units to the right from the origin. Okay. Right from the origin. Okay, and what we're going to do, we're going to calculate the distance from the center to some of the points around the outside of the circle, on the circle. So we're going to start with point A, and that's this point over here. And the distance from the center to point A is actually very easy to calculate because it's straight along the x-axis. So you can just count. One, two, three, four. It's five units. For point A, the distance is just five units. That was easy. All right, we're also going to look at point E. And point E is this point up here at the top of the circle. And if we draw the line segment from the center to point E, again, it's straight along the coordinate grid. You can see, maybe you can't see the lines are faint, but it's right along one of the graph lines. So it's straight units. It's one, two, three, four, five units. That one is also very simple to calculate. Where it's not so easy, is when you pick a point like point J over here because that goes diagonally through the, the grid. You can't just count unit lengths. So if you remember in the last lesson, we turned that into a triangle, right? And we used the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the length of the hypotenuse. Well, we could use the Pythagorean theorem again, or we could use the distance formula, which is really using the Pythagorean theorem just in a slightly different form. So I'm gonna use that today because you're less familiar with that. So I'm going to use the distance formula on point J to calculate the length of that segment from C to J, okay? So here are the xy coordinates for point J. It's 6, negative 3, and we know the center is 2, 0, and we want to get the distance between those two points. So this is the distance formula. You take the difference of the x's, x1 minus x2, and you square it. You take the difference in the y's, so y1 minus y2, and you square it. Add them together and square root the whole thing, the total. So here we go. It's the square root of, and we're going to do the x minus the x. So 6 minus 2. And square it. Then we add the difference of the y's, negative 3 minus 0 and you square it, okay? 6 minus 2 is 4, and we square it. Negative 3 minus 0 is negative 3, and we square it, and we add them and square root it, okay? 4 squared is 16. Negative 3 squared, be careful, that's negative 3 times negative 3, so that becomes a positive 9. 
So we have 16 plus 9, and we square root the total, and that is the square root of 25. No big surprise, it's also 5, right? And it makes sense, because if you remember the definition of a circle, every one of these points should be exactly the same distance away from the center, right? Every one of them was 5 and 5 and 5. And I'm betting all the other points would work out to 5 also, wouldn't they? All right, so Brandon says... He knows the equation for the circle. He says that it's x minus 2 squared plus y squared equals 25. And he says that every point on that circle fits this equation. So we're going to pick a point. Let's pick, um, let's pick point G. And let's check it, okay? So point G is 6 comma 3. So let's check it in this. So that's our x, that's our y. So let's check. x minus 2 would be 6 minus 2, and we have to square that, plus the y squared. The y is 3 squared, and he says that has to equal 25. So the big question is, is he correct? 6 minus 2 is 4 squared plus 3 squared. Is that true? Well, 16 plus 9, does that equal 25? Yes, he's correct. Okay, so for example, what if we don't just move it to the left and we go uh, to the right and we don't just move it up? What if we do both? So look at this circle. Look at where C is. It's moved over and up. So this center is at the X is 3 and the y is 4, so the center is at 3 comma 4. And again, if we look at point A, it's exactly 5 units. And if we look at point E, which is the one straight up at the top, we can see that that's also 5 units. I know I picked easy ones, right? But Here's the tricky one. Here's the J that we need to do the math for. So, point J, again, there's our X and our Y. Here's our X and our Y. So we do the X minus the X, 7 minus 3, and square it. And then we add 1 minus 4. And we square it, and we add them and square root the total. 7 minus 3 is 4 squared, plus 1 minus 4 is negative 3 squared. These should be so familiar by now. Square root of 4 squared is 16, negative 3 squared is 9. We're looking at the square root of 16 plus 9, which is the square root of 25. Da da, 5 again. So one of the students has come up with this equation, and he says it's x minus 4 squared plus y minus 3 squared is 25. Let's check his equation. Let's see, what number should we, let's do, hmm. Let's do K. Let's check point K and see if that works. Okay. I'm just randomly picking points at this point, you guys. I haven't even worked these out in advance. Okay, so K is 0 0.60. So let's see if this works. X minus 4. Or X is 6. So he says 6 minus 4 squared plus y, which is 0, minus 3 squared, should be 25. Well, 6 minus 4 is 2. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. And he says that should equal 25. Well, 2 squared is 4. Negative 3 squared is 9. Does 4 plus 9 equal 25? No, 
he is not correct. Okay. So, he's close, though. So, I'll tell you. If you have a circle and the center is the point H, K. So, like with the center, the 3 would be the H and the 4 would be the K. Okay? Okay. That's what that means. So if you have a circle with center HK and the radius is R, so that's like all these fives we keep coming up with, that's our radius. The equation for the circle would always be X minus H, whatever H is for that circle, squared, plus Y minus K, whatever the K is for that circle, squared, equals the radius squared, whatever the radius is for that circle, okay? So let's check it on um, this circle that we just did. Let's pick, let me see, I'll pick one of the numbers. What circle? Um, 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 um. How about F? Have we used F yet for anything? No, we haven't. So let's use point F, which is 6, 8. Okay, so let's check and see if this equation actually works, all right? It should work on every circle. So our x is 6, our y is 8. So this equation would be x minus, oh, x minus h from the center. So x minus 3, y minus k from the center. And when you square them and add them, it should equal our radius squared. What was our radius? Our radius has been 5 for all of these, right? So 5 squared. All right. So now we're going to check our point. So x is 6. So 6 minus 3 squared. y is 8. 8 minus 4 squared should equal 25. That's our big question. 6 minus 3 squared is 3 squared. 8 minus 4 squared is 4 squared. You probably know this by now because we've seen it so many times. 9 plus 16 is indeed 25. So yes, it worked. Okay. And if we checked it on the other circles that we worked on earlier, you could pick any point, write the equation like that with the, whatever the center numbers are, and the equation would work. And that is the formal equation of a circle with any center at hk and a radius of r. Okay, so now that we know that, now that we know what the equation is, we don't have to draw the graphs and calculate the tables with all the points. We can just go right to solving equations. And this is what I mean by that. What if they tell us that there's a circle with the center negative 2 comma 1 and it has a radius of 20 write the equation okay well there's our H and there's our K and there's R and remember the format for that equation is X minus H H is negative 2 so what happens when you do minus a negative 2 it becomes a plus 2 squared plus y minus k, the k is 1, squared equals, the radius is 20, so 20 squared is 400. That's our answer. Okay, let's do one more. Let's do b. So let's do this one. There's our h, there's our k, there's r, so it's x minus the h, which is 8, squared, plus y minus 0, because that's the k. y minus 0 is just y. We just say y squared. Equals, and the radius is 11. 11 squared is 121. And that's our equation. All right? What if we know the opposite? What if they tell us the equation and they say, well, now that I've given you the equation, you tell me what the center of the circle is and what the radius of the circle is, all right? So look at the first one, x minus 5. Well, this is the x minus h, right? 
So doesn't h have to be 5? Because that's x minus 5, x minus h. And this is y minus negative 7. That's how you get a y plus 7, right? y minus k, the k would be negative 7. And this is the r squared, so the radius is 12. Because 12 squared is 144. So the center is just 5, negative 7. Let's do one more. Let's do the second one. All right, so x minus h. Well, it's just x squared. There's no minus, right? So we're subtracting 0. So that means our h is 0 because this is x minus 0 squared. y minus 3 squared. This is supposed to be the y minus k. So the k is 3. y minus 3. y minus k. 225 is 15 squared. So the radius is 15. And our center is 0, 3. Okay, so I want to show you one more problem. I'm going to just draw this out freehand. Let's say we're given a circle and a center and a radius of diameter that goes through the center from one side to the other of the circle and we only know two things. We know the ends of the diameter are 10, 6 and 10, negative 8 and that's all we know. We can find the center, the radius and write the equation just knowing those two points, those two things. And here's how we do that. All right, pretend that's a round circle, and that's the center, okay? So here's the diameter that goes all the way across the circle from side to side, right through the center. And we know these two things. We know this point is 10, 6, and we know this point at this side is 10, negative 8. And that is all we know, okay? Well, the center of the circle is going to be the midpoint of those two points. It's going to be exactly halfway across that segment, right? Because each side has to be congruent to each other, right? That length has to be the same as that length. And you find the midpoint is actually quite simple. You just average the x's and the y's. So you add the x's and divide by 2. You add the y's and divide by 2. So you would add... 10 plus 10, and divide by 2, and that's your x coordinate. In your y coordinate, you add 6 plus negative 8, and divide by 2. Okay? So 10 plus 10, divided by 2, is just 10. 6 plus negative 8 is negative 2, divided by 2 is negative 1. So that's our center. That's our hk. That's our center. Okay? Okay, the radius, that's going to be doing the distance formula. So let's use this point and this point, okay? And we're going to do x minus x squared, so 10 minus 10 squared, this is going to be easy, plus y minus y, 6 minus negative 1 squared, Right. 10 minus 10 is 0, so that's easy to square. 6, six minus negative 1 is 7 squared. And we square root the total. Well, 0 squared is 0, so that's gone. This is square root of 7 squared, square root of 49, which is just 7. So our radius is 7. And now we have everything we need. We have our h and our k, and we have our radius. And now we can just write the equation. So the equation is just x minus h, and what's our h? 10 squared plus y minus, what's our k? k is negative 1, so y minus negative 1 would be y plus 1 squared equals the radius squared, 7 squared, 49. And there is our equation, all right? So just knowing those two points, we could figure all of that out. 
Okay, you guys, that is it for now, and you can go back to the Whitebird chat now. Bye.